guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Vima Tutorials. And as you know, what I do here is to help you prepare for exams on the use of English and on YouTube chair. If today is your first time on this channel, please start by clicking on the subscribe button and on the notification bell so you can always get notified each time I upload a new video. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Jam 2020 English language past questions. And I need, I need to go get your past questions compilation like this one. Or you know that type that you have so you can properly follow me on this lesson. And for those of you who are not Nigerians or those of you who are not in Nigeria, JAM is one of the exams that is really required of every student to write and pass before getting admission into any university in Nigeria. So if you are preparing for JAM this year, I, I urge you to stick to the video to the end. And even if you are not preparing for JAM or you are not a Nigerian, I still urge you to watch the video to the end because it is still an English language lesson. Now without wasting time, let's get right into the video. Question 1. The hospital was closed dash because there were no beds to put patients dash. The hospital was closed dash because there were no beds to put patients dash. We have option A again slash upon B off slash on C down slash at and D up slash in. Now let's look at the options. We have option A again. Again slash upon. We say something is closed again. What we are simply saying is that that thing has been closed another time. Now the word closed collocates with the word again. Now let's look at the second one upon. This is what falls this option. This is why this option is not the correct answer. Because we don't say lie upon bed. Patients lie in bed. We talk about lying down. You use in. You use the preposition in and not upon or on. You lie in bed. But you can sit on bed. You can jump on the bed. You can keep your books on the bed. But when we talk about lying down, you use the preposition in and not on or upon. So, like I said, this is what force this option is. Option B, we have off slash on. Off slash on. When something is closed off, it means that that thing is not allowed to be used for a period of time. That thing is not allowed to be used for a period of time. For example, you can say the government closed off the amusement park in order to renovate it. So it means that that thing is not open to the public. I hope you got that. So the words off can actually collocate with the word closed. And the second one, on. I already explained that you do not say lie on bed. So you already know this is not the correct answer to the presence of on. Now option C, we have down slash at. Down slash at. When you say a hospital or an establishment is closed down, what you are saying is that that hospital or that establishment has stopped working permanently. It means that that establishment is no longer operating permanently. Now, this word down collocates with the word closed. Let's look at the second one. The second one, at. This preposition at is used in showing place, is used in showing location of something. So it's not the correct answer. You cannot say lie down at bed. I already told you, whenever you want to talk about lying down, lying down in a bed, you use the preposition in. But you can lie on a bench. You can lie on a seat. But when it has to do with bed, always use the preposition in. I hope you got that. Now let's move to the last option, option D. Option D, we have up slash in. Up slash in. When you talk about a hospital or an establishment being closed up, what you're saying is that that hospital or that establishment has stopped being open to the public for a period of time. It has stopped being open to the public for a period of time. So this word collocates with the word closed. Now let's look at the second one. The second one in. I already told you that this is the only preposition that you have to use when you want to talk about lying down. And it has to do with bed. 
So you say lie down in bed and not lie down on bed or up on bed or at bed. So this is the correct answer. The hospital was closed up because there were no beds to put patients in. And of course, patients do lie in bed. When a person goes to a hospital to receive treatment and the person is being given a bed, the person is not being expected to jump on it or to sit on it or to stand on it. The person is being expected to lie in the bed. If there is need for you to sit down, you won't be given a bed in the hospital. Rather, you'll be given a seat. So, this is why option D is the correct answer. Question 2. We have the judge with his son, dash, the judge with his son, dash. We have option A, where B, shall, C, is, and D, are traveling to Lagos now. To choose the correct answer to this question, we have to consider the tense, the tense of the sentence. And the tense of this sentence is present continuous tense. Present continuous tense. The words traveling and now in the sentence shows that it is happening at the moment. It is happening at the moment. So, that will make us rule out option A and option B. Option A, where is the past tense of the word A. Ah. So, it's not, so, it cannot be used in a sentence that is in the present continuous. And option B, shall, is used in the future tense and not in a sentence that is in present continuous. So, that will leave us with option C and option D, is and A. Ah. These two can be used in a sentence that is in the present continuous. Now, to choose the correct answer among these two, we have to know if the subject of this sentence is singular or plural. If the subject of this sentence is singular, we are going to choose option C, is. And if the subject of this sentence is plural, we are going to choose option D. The subject of this sentence is the judge the judge and is singular so the correct answer is option c is please i recommend you watch the video i did on concord it really help you to prepare well for this exam if you need the link let me know in the comment section just tell me to give you the link on concord now let's move on let's go to the next question question three University teacher is an university teacher is an we have option A academic B academics C academician and D academia. Now let's look at the options. That option A academic. Academic. An academic is a person who teaches at a university. A person who teaches at a university. So this is the correct answer. A university teacher is an academic. Now let's look at the other options. I know why they're not the correct answer. So option B, academics. Academics means subjects or courses that you study in school, like the English language, physics, etc. So the subjects or courses that you study in school are academics. Now option C, academician. An academician is a member of an academy. For example, a member of a football academy can be called a football academician. So an academician is a member of an academy. Though so the past question compilation that I have says that option C, this option is the correct answer. And as you can see, it's not the correct answer. University teacher is not called an academician. That's why I advise that it's not good for you to depend only on past questions and answers that you have. The past questions and answers compilation that you have is not going to depend on it. You need to read your textbooks as well. And let's move to option D. Option D, we have academia. Academia. Academia is a place of learning. A place of learning, a place of teaching, and a place of research. A place of learning, teaching, and research, and people that are involved in it. For example, university. A university is an academia. Your school, 
Your secondary school is an academia, is a place of learning and teaching and also research. So, like I already said, option A is the correct answer. University teacher is called an academic. I hope you got that. Now, let's move to the next question, question four. The adventurer ran into many dash. The adventurer ran into many dash. Have option A, dear, B, dears, C, dear, and D, dears, in the forest. Option A, dear, B, dears, C, dear, and D, dears, in the forest. The examiner simply wants to find out if you know the difference between the deer that is being spelled D E A R and the deer that is spelled D E E R. Now, the deer that is spelled D E A R simply means beloved. It simply means beloved and it can also be used at the beginning of a letter. And the deer that is spelled D E E R is a name of an animal. A hoofed animal. So, the adventurer, you know who an adventurer is? An adventurer is a person who goes for an adventure. And one of the places that one can go for an adventure is in the forest. And it's in the forest that you find animals. And one of the animals that you find in the forest is deer. And because the sentence says that the adventurer ran into many, it means that it's more than one, that the adventure ran into more than one deer. So we're going to choose option D, deers. So the sentence would be, the adventure ran into many deers in the forest. So option D is the correct answer. Five, the argument between the two neighbors degenerated into dash. The argument between the two neighbors degenerated into dash. We have option A, a free for all. B, a free fight. C, a flee for all. D, a free for all fight. Now, the correct answer to this question is option D, a free for all fight. What the sentence is saying is that the argument between the two neighbors led into a fight between the neighbors, between the people that were involved in the argument. Now the expression is the argument between the two neighbors degenerated into a free for all fight, not a free for all. If you choose option A, a free for all is not complete, it doesn't make a complete sense. And if you choose option B, a free fight is not still the correct answer, it's not the right expression. Like I said, option D, a free for all fight is the correct expression. Question 6. The class comprised of option A, option B, comprises of option C, comprise, and D, comprises more girls than boys this session. The class, option A, comprised of B, comprises of C, comprise, D, comprises more girls than boys this session. In this question, the examiner simply wants to find out if you are aware that the word of does not come after the word comprise, like most of us speak in our everyday conversations here in Nigeria. It is wrong for you to have of after the word comprise or comprises. The only time where you have of coming after the word comprise is when the word comprise is in the past tense. And in a sentence where you have comprised of, comprised must be preceded by is. What that means is that comprised must come after is in the sentence. Now, let's look at the options. Our option A, comprised of. And this is not the correct answer because comprised of is not being preceded by is. In the sentence, there is no is. And in this option, there is no is before comprised so that's why it's not the correct answer option b comprises of like i told you earlier of does not come after the word comprise or comprises so this is not the correct answer option c comprise comprise this is not the correct answer even though 
there is no of coming after the word comprise in this option because the subject of the sentence the class is singular so it has to go with a singular verb and this option comprise is a plural verb even though it doesn't have s i recommend you watch my video on rules of concord so you'll be able to understand singular verb and plural verb the difference and how to use them when you have a verb that does not contain s is plural and a verb that contains s is singular when used in the third person now the class is third person singular so we are going to choose option d comprises the expression is the class comprises more girls than boys this session question seven the terrorist bought dash we have option a a brown small nigerian ethan pot b a small brown nigerian ethan pot c an ethan brown small nigerian pot d a nigerian small brown ethan pot this question is meant to test our knowledge on the arrangement of adjectives. I hope you know adjectives are words that qualify nouns. Now, this is how to arrange adjectives. In arrangement of adjectives, the first thing that comes is the quantity. The quantity. Is it one, two, few, or a lot? The quantity. That's the first thing that comes when you are arranging adjectives. Now, the second thing that comes is the quality. The quality or your opinion. Is the thing you are describing beautiful? Is it ugly? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it expensive? Then after quality, what you have is size. The size of the thing you are describing, big or small. Then this is followed by age. Is it new, old, is it modern or ancient? Then you talk about the shape. Is it round, is it square or rectangular? After describing the shape of what you are talking about, now the next thing is the color. Is it red or black? If you are describing a seat, for example, is it a red seat or a black seat? Now, after the color, the next thing is the origin. Is it African? Is it Nigerian? Or American this is followed by type the type of thing you are describing for, for example if you are describing a film you have to indicate here if it's an Android phone or an iPhone that you are describing now after the type the next thing is the noun the name of the thing you are describing I already have a video that will teach you more on how to arrange adjectives in a sentence. If you want to watch the video, let me know in the comment section so I can give you the link. Now, let's choose the correct option. Now, option A, a brown small Nigerian ethan pot. And this is not the correct answer because in this option, the color comes before the size. And size is supposed to come before color, like I told you. Now, option B, a small brown Nigerian ethan pot. This is the correct answer. The first, the first one is A, which describes the quantity. It tells you that it's singular. Now, small, which is the size of the ethan pot or the pot we are describing, followed by color, followed by origin, Nigerian, followed by type, then the noun. So this is the correct answer. Please endeavor to watch the video that I did on how to arrange adjectives. It will really help you. And you also know the mnemonics that will help you to remember it in your exam. So just watch the video to really help you. I'm sure of that. Now option C is not the correct answer. You already know how to arrange adjectives. So there's no need to consider the other options. Option B is the correct answer. Let's move to the next question. Now, question 8. I have already dash. Option A, hanged. B, hanged. C, hung. 
and they hung the picture on the sitting room wall. I've already dashed, hanged, be hanged, see hung, and d hung the picture on the sitting room wall. This is a very simple question. Whenever you use have in a sentence, the verb must be in the past participle. The verb must be in the past participle whenever you use have in a sentence. And our verb in this sentence is hang. H-A-N-G, hang. Now, the past participle of hang is what? Hung. So the correct answer is option D, hung. I've already hung the picture on the sitting room wall. It is not hanged or hunged. There is nothing like hunked. Hanged is past tense. Hunked, there is nothing like it. And option C, hang, is the present tense. So like I said, option D, hung, is the correct answer. I have already hung the picture on the sitting room wall. Question 9. Most of us will attend a conference. Dash. A. Holding. B. Held. C. Being held. D. To hold at a burden. Letter D C. Most of us who attend the conference A holding B held C being held and D to hold at a burden. Letter D C. Now this sentence is in the future continuous tense or future progressive tense. Future continuous tense tells us that something will happen in the future and will last for a period of time. Future progressive tense or future continuous tense tells us that something will happen in the future and that thing that will happen in the future will last for a period of time. So because the conference will hold later this year shows that it will happen in the future and you know that conferences last for a period of time. So that's why this sentence is in the future progressive tense or future continuous tense. Now we have to select the option that is in the future continuous tense. And the word that is in the future continuous tense is holding. Although the word holding can also be used in present continuous tense. But in this so you can say the meeting is holding right now. I can also say the meeting will be holding tomorrow. So the word holding can be used both in the present continuous tense and in the future tense, future continuous tense, rather. So this is why is the correct answer. Option B, held. Held is the past tense of hold. And, and you know we are talking about future continuous tense or future progressive tense. So it's not the correct answer. Then option C, being held, past tense. Option D, option D to hold, is in the future simple tense. So it's not the correct answer. As you already know, the correct answer is option A, holding. Now let's move to the next question, question 10. Question 10. I shall work hard so that I can A, secure, B, make, C, receive, and D, grub a distinction in English. I shall work hard so that I can A, secure, B, make, C, receive, and D, grub. A distinction in English. When you talk about scoring an exam, you use the verb make. So option B is the correct answer. It's not option A, secure. You can use secure when you talk about securing an admission or securing a space. But when you talk about score, you use the verb make, option B. Option C, receive. You don't receive score. You make it. You don't say, I received A in English. No. You made A in English. And D, option D, grub. The word grub means to look for something by digging. To look for something by digging or by searching under something. Like searching for something under under a seat. One can say that you are grubbing for maybe your pen under the seat. So this way it doesn't really have any bearing with making a score in an exam. So like I already said, the correct answer is option B, make. I shall work hard so that I can make 
a distinction in English. Okay guys, this will come to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this video. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to click on the like button. And also do not forget to share it to your friends so you can get many people to join us in preparing for this year's jam. Alright, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time in another video. Bye bye for now. And don't forget, in the next video we are going to be concentrating on questions 11 to 20. So make sure you click on the like button and on the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I upload the video. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you next time in another video. Bye bye.